How is it possible that echo consciousness and residual are both on a loop? I love this question. First of all, this is from my friend Paul. If you don't follow Paul, go follow him now. Amazing coach. When it comes to residual energy, this is the energy that is not really sentient. It's just an output of some kind of either trauma or large experience and that energy, because it's a large output of energy that we give off and our electromagnetic field is quite large. It's actually much larger than you expect. In fact, sidebar, many scientists believe that, that electromagnetic energy can expand approximately 29 feet. I don't know if it looks like it's 29 feet, but it is quite large when I see it. But that large expansion of energy can actually give off some kind of form that is continually felt in that space. That would be residual energy. Now, echo consciousness, there is some kind of sentience behind echo consciousness, but it's not necessarily about, it's got its own separate mind. Echo consciousness is about how that echo of conscious energy can be in communication to spirit. So echo consciousness would be one of those moments where you might think that you're talking to a ghost, but it's actually not a ghost. It is communication in, in the particles of energy in the quantum field, but that quantum field is actually in connection to spirit. It might look scary to us. It's still not spirit though, because spirit isn't scary. Spirit is compassionate and kind and understanding, but yet we still get the echo of that conscious energy of what that spirit was like. Why do we do that? It's all reflection moments. We get that so we get the evidence of what that spirit was like so we know who we're talking to. And then when you're in communication to that echo of conscious energy, this is very much about how you are understanding energy in that moment.